Hey familia, welcome to my new series, In the Pocket, where we're going to be discussing everything bass and groove. What better way to start off the series than to celebrate the 10th year anniversary of Mute Math's sophomore record, Armistice. We'll take a look at the title track and also break down the bass line and just talk about how it came about. So let's talk about the way this track came about. Um, this was for Mute Math sophomore record, Armistice. We had rented a house in Uptown New Orleans and just put together a studio there. And um, I was kind of popping in and out of living there and staying there for a few weeks at a time. My wife was pregnant with our first child at the time, so I was in Nashville, I wasn't living in New Orleans, so I'd go down, stay some time, record, and then I would leave. And I remember um, when I first heard the track, I think there were some uh, really good drums on it and probably some other um, uh, chord structures going on because I remember having to think how am I going to work in this D to F movement, which is essentially the whole song. I've always been a fan of Tower of Power. I remember going to a thrift shop in uh, McAllen, Texas and going through this old vinyl and, fa and finding uh, the Tower of Power back to Oakland record. I remember just being blown away by the groove, all the tremendous playing, not just the bass playing, but the drums and the guitar work and the horns, obviously. Uh, so um, Rocco Francis Prestia was a huge influence on me and funny enough, my uh, first son, his name is Rocco. So we had kind of this double Rocco influence on this line, um, on this armistice bass line, subconsciously, I guess. Um, my son is not named uh, after Rocco from Tower of Power. It's just a coincidence. I was also very into, um, or had been studying for a long time, way years prior to recording with Mute Math and being with Mute Math, uh, Jaco Pistorius and his like 16th note kind of funk thing. So, you know, that what I'm talking about is for those that don't know, is this, you know, kind of so you have this just kind of this. Doo -doo -doo. Being a guitar player, um, I was used to playing um, with a pick, and I found out that Carol Kay uh, was was using a pick a lot of the time on these records. And a lot of purists, um, and I was one of them, would argue that you know it's not it's not bass like to play with a pick. You know that was kind of like a punk thing that I would use back in back in the day. Well, I totally disagree with that, and I think. A pick is a wonderful tool to use for bass. Um, and so I started exploring that more during this time. And obviously I can play a little faster and um, kind of keep up that intensity. The thing that I don't like about the pick sometimes is um, the click factor, right? But there's ways to kind of make this a little bit more along the lines of what I like. So I'm, I'm using flat wounds on here. What I did with the pick playing is palm mute and pick. So I was getting that thing. It wasn't like a, which is cool too. You know, I, I, I used to get aggressive, but for this funk style, it was more of a. So you get the idea, you have that, that movement, that down and up picking with the palm mute. You 
get a lot of punch from that, especially with the flat wounds. So that's kind of the approach that I, or the state I found myself in, right? I heard the track, I heard the drums, I heard this kind of funky thing and this riff kind of just dropped out of the sky. But it dropped out of the sky in the sense that I had a lot of other experience to lead up to this point. The interesting thing, I think what makes this line, this bass line, fun and a little bit extra special is that I use the flat seven for both chords. So for the D it was pretty obvious, right? I'm always focusing on the D, the A, the octave, and the flat seven, the C, right? Okay. And so the movement of the chords is that D, and then it goes to the F. But on the F, instead of playing an E natural, I did the flat seven, right? So I'm doing that as well. The F, C, the, f the five, the octave, F, and the E flat. So I think that movement made it extra special and then just all the chromaticism between the two. So I would normally go up, right? D, E flat, E, F, and then play that F to E flat. So. So let's look at the bass line specifically. Um, I checked out the track, which I hadn't heard in a while, and um, I realized that I definitely morphed the bass line into something a little slightly, um, a little, a little different from live than what I actually did when I record when I recorded it. Same elements, same kind of movements, but I was used to doing something a little different live. Uh, which is probably on the Armistice Live record or DVD if you get a chance to check that out. I haven't, I don't remember exactly what I pay, played, but I did, I do remember I played kind of this thing. So let's look at the chorus now. So you have that, um, I'm in drop D too, by the way. So D and then A, D, G for the, for the tuning. So, um, essentially the chorus is like this. I'll play it slow and then up to speed. So you have that, that you could start on the low D or up here if you want on the octave. I think on the record it's more of the octave. Something like that. Right? And then that's the next movement chromatically up to the F. Right? Um, F, E flat, F, E flat. And then leading up to the scale going F, G, A, C, C sharp, D, and then back down, A, D, right?
so let's look at the verse real quick. You have that little anticipated push up on that high A, and then you have some more 16th note movement, but it's broken up a little bit more, and you're in a higher register on the verse, all right? So it kind of breaks up the monotony of that lower part and has that almost release section, if you will. So it'd be one, two, three, uh. Slower. A little double stop sometimes on there. The A is accentuated, but I'm playing that A, that E. So double stop meaning I'm playing those two notes at the same time. To the F. And then all these other little fills are just kind of improv, and I would change them, honestly, from night to night, where I would just kind of go down the scale, um, starting in the D. Right? Um, so right there, I'm basically thinking of a D blues scale. With some chromatic notes in there. Right? D, F, G, G sharp, A, C, D. And then I got, you got those like little squiggly things that were um, very kind of like the Paul Jackson, which was another, he was, he was a very big influence on me. Um, Headhunters and Herbie Hancock stuff. Right, you got that feel. Let's look at the bridge. I really like the bridge. I completely forgot what we did on it because we changed the arrangement in the bridge part um, for the live uh, version, which is what we did for years. So um, it was this kind of thing. So I'd play it up here on this D, alternating between the octave and the flat seven. Um, those elements I would still incorporate sometimes into fills and riffs, especially when the when the breakdown would happen. Um, I do different licks, and all around kind of this shape. This uh, I think of it in um, a D like minor pentatonic or a blues kind of thing, right? So main notes again F G A C. That's it. Just trying to create melodic lines with that. All right, so thank you so much for joining me on this first session of In the Pocket. If you have any comments, please leave them below. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Also, of course, please like and subscribe to this channel. Peace and love.